this evening I want to uh, deal with the subject, uh, stop physically abusing your wives and children. Or another title that we want to deal with uh, the message this evening is uh, stop beating your wife. Let's turn to it in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3 and uh, verse uh, 3. 1 Timothy, or uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 3. Now, in the context here, what Paul is dealing with is the matter here of leadership in the local uh, New Testament church. And what he's talking about here are the qualifications of a pastor. Now, in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and in verse 3, he says, not given, these are the list of the qualifications here, and he says, not given to wine, but then he says, see here, no striker. See, no striker. This is 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 3. See, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient. And then he says an interesting thing here. See, not a brawler. See, not a brawler not covetous. So he mentions two things here that deal with the matter of uh, anger, and that is number one, say no striker. Now that's a person who uses their fist to hit someone and to physically abuse them. And then um, in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 3, it talks here about not a brawler. Now, I think most of us would understand what uh, uh, or who a brawler uh, is. Now, when you turn over to Titus chapter 1 and verse 7, we find here that he's dealing with the same thing, the qualifications of a New Testament uh, pastor. And in Titus chapter 1 and verse 7, he says, for a bishop, and that's a synonym for the word pastor, say a synonym. Uh, uh, that simply means an overseer of the uh, local church. But he says here, for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed. But then you see what it says here, not soon angry. See, not soon angry, not given to wine. And then he has the same uh, word that's used there in 1 Timothy, and he says there, no striker and not given a, a filthy uh, lucre. Now, we have three words here that relate to the matter of anger in the life of a child of God. See, we have the word uh, no striker. Now, as referred to as a striker, see, someone who uses his fist. And then um, we have the word here, not a brawler, see, somebody who is a brawler. We know what that is. Somebody's always getting in uh, fights and controversy uh, with someone else. And then uh, the third word in Titus 1 and verse 7 is the word not soon angry. You see, where uh, what you have in these three words here, see, no striker, no brawler, someone who is not soon uh, angry, you have someone who is totally out of control. They cannot control their emotions and they get into um, literally, uh, the word there is fist fights and brawls and uh, things like that. Now, in uh, Titus chapter 1 and verse uh, uh, 8, it says, but a lover of hospitality. You see, a lover of good men. Say sober, just, holy, and then uh, you have the word temperate. Uh, T-E-M-P-E-R-A-T-E. -E -E. Someone tell me what that word temperate means when you read it in the Bible. Uh, it means what? Self-control. See, it means someone under self-control. That's what the word temperate means. See, somebody who is under self-control as versus somebody who is out of uh, self-control. Uh, uh, now, uh, the Bible is very, very clear here that you see this person that is a striker or a brawler or uh, gets angry very uh, soon is not qualified to be 
a uh, spiritual leader in the New Testament uh, uh, church. That's very, very uh, clear. Say they're not qualified to exercise leadership in uh, the New Testament church. Now, uh, these words here are rather strong words. Say, not uh, a striker, no striker. Now, what's that talking about? Say, it's talking about somebody who uses their fist, somebody who gets in fights, and uh, is literally a striker, where he is known to strike other uh, 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 people. And then the, you have the word here, uh, no brawler. Say, somebody who's always uh, brawling, they're out of control, and it seems like they get in controversy and fights and one thing or another where they are uh, totally out of uh, control. Now, um, uh, who would this be referring to? Well, evidently, as we study the New Testament, a lot of people who uh, got saved had these characteristics in their lives before they were saved. Before they were saved, they were brawlers, and uh, they were strikers, getting in a lot of uh, uh, fights, and they were very soon, and they were given over to the matter of uh, anger. Now, you bring it down to uh, practical uh, application. See, somebody who was characterized by that, uh, those attitudes and those actions before they were saved. You see, now that they're saved, the Bible is very, very clear that those things are not in keeping with the Word of God, and those things should not now obviously be characteristic of somebody who is now uh, uh, saved. Probably referring to a man who would physically abuse his wife. Say, he would beat his wife. He would punch his wife. He would physically abuse his wife. How many have ever known of uh, a man like that or somebody uh, like that? How many know, uh, raise your hand. You know, er almost er every hand goes up. See, almost every hand in the audience goes up where we hear uh, about certain men where, again, see, we're talking about anger now. We're concluding our studies on anger. And uh, uh, what we find is they're out of control. And sometimes they will beat their wife and they will uh, hurt their wife and physically abuse their, uh, their wife. See, now what the Word of God is talking about here, see, is a brawler or a striker. Now, a lot of times, or not a lot of times, uh, hopefully not a lot of times, but sometimes there are people like that in a local church where they seem very spiritual and godly, but they uh, physically abuse their wives and they're out of control uh, in the home. And then uh, uh, it probably would also refer to a man who, uh, and because it's talking about men here in, in the Bible, uh, a man who would physically abuse his children, uh, where uh, he'd get in fights with his children, uh, he would punch his children, he'd be a striker and a brawler and uh, someone who is angry and uh, even uh, take it out on his own children. How many have, have ever heard of a, a man who uh, got in physical uh, altercation with his, uh, his children? Raise your hand if you ever heard of anybody. Uh, yeah, yeah. Say, now all the hands go up. Why? Because, say, this is common in our society today. In our society today, there are men who physically abuse their wives. We hear about it all the time. They physically abuse their uh, uh, children, and that's not uncommon. See, every, all of us have heard of men who do that to their wives, and they do that to uh, their children. Now, see, what we're talking about is a matter of anger. See, now, a person like that who is a striker, or as the Bible says, a brawler, or someone who cannot control uh, their temper, say they are out of control. They, um, they're just uh, doing things that are totally contrary 
to the way a Christian should live. Now, it's interesting that in these qualifications that for a pastor that these things would be mentioned. Now, why would they be mentioned here in the Word of God? Just like all of us, everybody raised their hand tonight, and uh, we all know men like that. They abuse their wives, they abuse their uh, uh, children, and so forth. Uh, and uh, that was not uncommon in the New Testament day. Now, and what Paul is saying, and Paul wrote 2 Timothy, or 1 2 T Timothy and Titus, what he's saying, now someone like that should never even come under consideration in relation to leadership in the New Testament uh, uh, church. Now, this type of a person is definitely not under the control of the Holy Spirit of God. And a person like that has no right to have any leadership in the New Testament uh, church. Turn to the familiar passage in Galatians chapter 5. And the Bible is very clear here in Galatians chapter 5. And we read here in verse uh, 22. And the Bible uh, says here, But the fruit of the Spirit, see, is love and joy and peace and long-suffering. And then it has the word there, gentleness. In other words, see, gentleness is a fruit of the Holy Spirit of God. See, uh, when someone is under the control of the Holy Spirit of God, you see, they will be a gentle person. Now, by the way, that word gentleness is a word that's used uh, several times in the New Testament and most of the time, it is translated in the Bible, kind or kindness. Most all the time, when you read the word kind or kindness in the Bible, it's the same word that's used here, uh, gentleness. Now, by the way, that's an interesting thing. A lot of people ask the question, why, if it's the same word, the exact same word, why isn't it translated the exact same way when it's used in the various places in the New Testament? Like, say, here it's the word uh, gentleness. Most all the time, it's translated kindness. Now, why is it kindness some places uh, and gentleness here in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22? And nobody has the answer to that question. You'd think it would be translated the same way in each uh, uh, time it's used if it is the exact same word, and it is. But see, that word gentleness, see, now that's the word kindness, see, and that is the fruit of the Holy Spirit of God. Now, see, if someone is a gentle person, they'll not be a striker, amen? They're not going to go around and literally that word, hitting people with their fist if they are under the control of the Holy Spirit of God and they have that gentleness and that kindness uh, in their heart and in their uh, life. Now, we read in the next verse in Galatians 5.22, it says meekness and temperance. Now, we know that uh, temperance, as we already mentioned, simply means self-control. See, the Holy Spirit enables us to exercise self-control so that our temper does not control us, but we're under the control of the Holy Spirit of God. And as a result of that, we now have a gentle spirit. Now again, see what we're talking about, rather than this spirit of being a striker or a brawler, and that's exactly what uh, Paul mentions, or someone that is soon to get angry. Somebody that has a chip on their shoulder, they're always angry, and they're uh, uh, always causing a lot of trouble, even to the matter of physically abusing uh, someone uh, else. Now, as we turn over to uh, one of the key passages in the Bible in relation to the matter of anger in the life of a child of God, that's Ephesians chapter uh, four, we've referred to this chapter several times, but in uh, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30. Now, we definitely know that if someone is a uh, striker, now, literally, they go around and they use their fist to strike other 
people, their wife, their children. Or if someone is a brawler, now that's the word that's used in the Bible here. Say they're a brawler or they're out of control, uh, their anger has taken over in uh, their lives. They're a very uh, angry uh, person. Now, in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30, say anyone like that is grieving the Holy Spirit of God. No question about that. They are sinning against God and they're grieving the Holy Spirit of God. Now, Ephesians 4 and verse 30, the Bible says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit. Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Now, in verse 31 of Ephesians chapter 4, he tells us how you and I grieve the Holy Spirit of God in our lives so that we're not filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, in verse 31, he says, And let all bitterness, see, and wrath and anger. So he's dealing with that matter there again of anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. So the Bible is very clear. Now again, see, uh, Paul is writing here the church at Ephesus and evidently before some of these people got saved, see, they were characterized by being bitter and full of anger and wrath and that was uh, the way they lived. Now, See, now in verse 31, he says, be put away from you. See, you as a child of God need to get all of that stuff out of uh, your life. See, uh, no child of God should be a striker, a brawler, or someone who is quick-tempered. Uh, See, now the next verse tells us here in verse 32, Ephesians 4 and verse 32, and be ye kind one to another. Now, see, that word kind is the exact same word as the word gentleness in Galatians 5 and verse 22. It's not another word. It's not another form of the word. It's the exact same word. So, in other words, say, the Holy Spirit of God produces gentleness in our lives, which means what? Simply kindness in our life. Someone who's controlled by the Holy Spirit will be a kind person. Now, you see what he says here in verse 32. And be ye kind one to another. See, now that's the uh, fruit of the Holy Spirit in the life of a child of God. See, the Holy Spirit of God produces kindness in our lives. See, someone uh, who is not controlled by the Holy Spirit will be full of bitterness and wrath, and they will be full of anger. Why? Because, see, they are not controlled by the Holy Spirit of God. See, and when someone is a brawler or a striker or soon angry, they certainly are grieving the Holy Spirit of God, and they are not under the control of the Holy Spirit of God. Now, one of the uh, beautiful things the Bible teaches is that God has shown and is kind towards us. Just like the Bible teaches uh, God loves us, God has shown His love, as a result of that, we ought to be loving uh, people. But now, as we think of this word of kind, in Ephesians, turn back to Ephesians chapter 2, and we read here in verse 7. Now, this is just before the great salvation verses here. Uh, for by grace are ye saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, in verse 7 of Ephesians chapter 2, it says that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. Now, and then, you see what it says in verse 7, Ephesians 2 and verse 7, uh, the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness. In other words, and that's the same word, gentleness, Galatians 5.22, the word kind in Ephesians 4 uh, passage, it's the same word. See, God has shown His kindness towards us. Now, in what way and how has God shown His kindness towards you and me? The Bible says toward us, see, through 
Christ Jesus. In other words, see, when he died on the cross, that is the ultimate way that God has shown his kindness to you and to me. It's uh, uh, in relation to what Jesus Christ did on the cross uh, for us. Now, uh, turn back to uh, Titus chapter 3 and verse 4. Now, again, we have another great passage here. Now, that's the word gentleness, the word kindness. See, used many times in the Word of God. Now, here in Titus chapter 3 and verse 4, it says, But after that, see, the kindness. See, and the Bible says, and love of God. So you see there, kindness is associated with the love of God. And the love of God towards you and me is associated with kindness. Now, but how does God show kindness towards me? By overlooking my sin? By allowing me to do anything I want to do? See what it says in Titus 3 and verse 4. After that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared. You see, and uh, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us by the washing of regeneration, the renewing of the Holy Spirit. Now, you see, there in the Word of God, see, the Bible teaches that God has shown His kindness towards you and towards me in relation to what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross of Calvary. Amen? Say, that was the greatest illustration, that is the greatest display of kindness in the Word of God, was when Jesus Christ went to the cross and died for my sin and for your uh, uh, sin. Now, we all have heard many, many times that we ought to love because the Lord has loved us. We ought to be a loving people because God has loved us. We turn back to Ephesians chapter 4 and uh, verse 32. See in Ephesians 4, 32, Be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So now you see, because He loves us and uh, because He's forgiven us, we ought to love others and we ought to forgive others. We've heard that many, many times, and certainly that's a clear uh, teaching of the Word of God. But now, as we uh, look into the Word of God, see, the Bible associates the kindness of God with the love of God. In other words, God has showed the ultimate degree of kindness towards us by going to the cross and dying for our sins on Calvary. So now, see, we have the same setup here in the Word of God. See, God is a kind God. God has shown His kindness towards you. He's shown His kindness towards me. So therefore, as a result of that, I ought to be a kind person. Amen? See, I am the recipient of His kindness towards me, which was displayed at Calvary, now as a result of that, see, I ought to be a kind person. Now, you take somebody who's mean, somebody who's a striker, someone who's a brawler, someone who is soon uh, angry, someone who uh, can never get along with uh, anybody else, and they have that that, that hateful spirit that we read about, that bitter spirit that we read about in the Word of God. See, that is totally contrary to the Christian way of life. And that is an indication that that person knows nothing at all about the Holy Spirit of God. And it certainly indicates that that person is not under the control of the Holy Spirit because the fruit of the Spirit is gentleness, literally kindness in the life of a child of God. If I'm saved and I'm right with God and I'm under the control of the Holy Spirit of God, I will be a kind person. Amen? Amen. See, someone who is not kind 
oh, I'm a, I'm a Christian, but I'm a nasty Christian. I'm a mean Christian. You see, uh, see uh, that, that's a person that knows nothing about the Holy Spirit of God. See, God has shown His kindness towards us. And if anybody is saved, the evidence of, one of the evidences of that salvation is that they should stop being a striker where they use their fist and they uh, get in fights and uh, abuse their wives. They abuse their, uh, uh, their children. Literally, they punch them and uh, get in fights with them. See, that is so contrary to the Word of God. See, if someone is saved, they should not be a striker. If someone is saved, they should not be a brawler, and especially with their own wife and their own children. And there are people that abuse their, their children. They are uh, children abusers in, uh, in that sense. Now, see, uh, that what Paul is saying here. Now, if somebody uh, wants to be a leader in the church, that person is automatically eliminated. See, in fact, if a person is abusing his wife and children, he probably shouldn't even be a member of the local church. But evidently, this was common. It was common in the society, and it was common before uh, they got uh, saved. So the Bible teaches that if you and I are under the control of the Holy Spirit of God, now again, a lot of people get all messed up and they get into a lot of unbiblical and unscriptural things, but always keep this in mind. See, if someone is controlled by the Holy Spirit of God, according to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22, they will be a kind person. That is the indication that they under, the, are under the control of the Holy Spirit of God. So according to the Bible, a Christian should not be a striker, he should not be a brawler, and he should not uh, be soon angry. See, that is not the fruit and the attitude that the Holy Spirit wants to produce in a person's life. Now, as you read these verses in the Bible tonight, see, uh, these things were not uncommon in the New Testament. And Paul, we could go into other uh, passages in the New Testament, he wanted to make it very, very clear. Now, that's the way you used to live. That's the way you were before you got saved. Now you're saved, come under the Holy Spirit of God, and you should evidence kindness in your life. See, the fruit of salvation should be now you're a kind person. Now, before you were bitter, before you were angry, but now you need, see, as he said there in uh, Ephesians 4, uh, 32, put all that off. See, get rid of it. Just like uh, you'd have some dirty clothes and, and you need to get those dirty clothes off and get some clean clothes on. See, that's what he's talking about in the Word of God in relation uh, to this. So, now you see, it's, um, it's a problem. And it was a problem in the New Testament, but what, what Paul is saying, it is not something that should characterize the child of God. It's not something that the New Testament church should put up with, and it's not uh, something that a Christian should put up with in their uh, life. So as we think of this matter of anger, the Bible is very, very uh, clear. 